as the skill gap gets higher and higher and as 1v1s just seem to get tougher and tougher it looks like it's almost impossible to rank up now and frankly it just gets so difficult to the point where you can either quit 1v1s or people just refuse to play 1v1s including me sometimes because 1v1s seems to be i think the most intense and honestly the hardest game to get good at but today we're going to go over a few points i have ready for you guys and maybe a little bit more conclusively than my last video and specifically to 1v1s but aside from that enjoy the video sit back relax let's go over why you still suck at 1v1s what truly separates a good player from a bad player is the ability to be always on good boost and to always be able to scan the correct times for boost so what do i mean by this I simply mean getting those pads and understanding and memorizing these pathways because a lot of the times it looks like people in 1v1s just never have the same amount of boost as the other guy or even close to having the same amount and they'll concede the goal purely due to the lack of boost. Why does this happen? Well, a lot of the times actually people will take at least 2 or 3 seconds out of their own play or out of their 50 to go for the big boost instead of going for this pathway and back to the goal whether we defend the goal or stay near the ball itself a lot of people just go back for the big boost and honestly you can really see why that's a problem you do that quite a lot especially in diamond and plat very i guess it's a subconscious thing really i mean i do it way too much a lot of people still do it in diamond and plat and yet they still don't find a way to memorize these pathways first of all remember the central one that's the easiest one to remember whenever you're under pressure in midfield in 1v1s or there's a loose 50 just remember stick to the center remember those words but then for these sort of i guess outer boosts for example let's make a situation up right now let's put the ball here you've just been contested the ball's dropped to the side you don't have enough boost you're on two boost now here if we can just pretend we have zero boost actually we take a turn here and rather than going for that big boost because we could be under pressure from a shot here potentially you stick towards your goal side and you take the mini pads very simple very easy to understand but honestly poor boost management will do you so much harm and probably more than you've expected this is just one situation i want to show you in regards to the idea of over committing and under committing now this is a situation that my opponent has 97 boost he's i think doing well off in terms of positioning he's on my side most right now and i currently here on a different account here i have the ball kind of under my control not fully but it's just bounced and it is a i guess you could say it is my control right now now if we can go fly view real quick fly around and just take a look at this situation here the hap 24 has i guess all the field here whether you want to go infield to challenge me later on because i do want to go up the wall though so ideally the hap will not challenge early on this wall you'd think he should be actually going down here kind of containing i guess having a more conservative position down here and overall looking to defend his goal side as i'm kind of looking to utilize the ball and i see him from my perspective here i see him pushing towards me and i'm thinking okay i should hit this ball towards the center i mean he's open right now let's look at what our opponent does here from his perspective kind of he has all the boost in the world he doesn't need to be on this wall and from a kind of awkward, very, very, very early challenge. I mean, this is a complete unnecessary jump here. He, um, first of all, messes up his car control. Messes up the time wheels challenge. And overall, should here in this position give up a free goal. Which he does. What went wrong here, it's really simple for you to understand. If you are struggling with 1v1s, there's no point in committing early. Committing early is an extremely extremely high level i guess aspect of a game that you need to learn it's a very high level thing because you need to be proactive at every time when you're challenging early 
and to challenge early as a lower rated player is pretty much committing to your defeat in the long term and if you want to learn how to challenge simply put take your time and think in your brain how can I just about delay the challenge you don't want to delay it too much but delay it just enough that you don't land yourself up in a situation where you've again left an open goal and you know what he actually went on to lose his game like very heavily if I show you in the replays yeah he did lose quite heavily <laughs> lost 7-1 and that's just one of the situations. But needless to say, you understand that you can't commit early at your level. And I'm talking to you, Diamonds. Do not commit that early. Take your time. Delay your challenges. I think the worst symptom of a bad 1v1 player is the ability, or I guess the bad ability, to rush his offense every single time. And this is almost like... I think a common occurrence in most players below, honestly even in champ, grand champ players can rush this. It's such a hard thing to control, but you need to realize that the more you rush your offense, the less control you have over the ball. So how do we counteract this and how do you, if you're asking yourself right now, how do you improve this at a really fast rate? Well, simply, it's, it's very, very easy to do this. You can go and dribble training packs, you can go and custom training packs, but for two I guess two minutes in free play, just take your time right now, maybe right after this video, go into free play and keep the ball in the hood of your car for like two minutes as I said, and drive it around the entire field. Do that exercise every single day. I promise you, if you do that every single day, you will see a slight difference over a week, you'll see a big difference over two weeks, and you will see a huge difference over four weeks. This should be like, honestly like a daily ritual for you. And the idea of dribbles in 1v1s being extremely useful is very, very valid, actually. As I said, do this drill every single day. Do custom training packs. It's very simple. I'm telling you the basics. It's down to you to put in the work and improve as a player in 1v1s. Now, by all means, obviously, Rocket League is not like the gym. It's not playing an actual sport. But in a way, you are playing a digital sport, if you want to think of it that way. And with every, I guess, type of sport and every activity that you're going to, I guess, want to build towards getting better at, you're going to need to set up a dedicated program, something that will give you results. A lot of people just kind of, as I said, I think I said this last video as well, will they wing things? And in 1v1s, you can't really afford to not practice almost every single day. And I say this to people who are really serious about improvement. If you do want to get good at the game, especially 1v1s, because 3v3s can still be a very fun experience, even if you're losing or winning, but 1v1s when you're losing is quite painful. And the only way to stop that is by getting on that training ground, such as custom training packs. Seriously, there's so many of them. I'm not this time, I'm not even going to tell you what training packs to go for here. There are just so many training packs you can choose from. They're all very, very good for 1v1s. These are just, I mean, you're by yourself. You're not playing with a teammate. You're not doing passing plays. All these from saves to Mises training pack to the ultimate warm-up. This is an amazing pack, actually, and I don't know why it's not favorited. And I will link this, actually, in the description and in the comments. Seriously, if you're not doing these packs, the most fundamental aspect of your game will lack, always. You'll always be a step behind, and you'll always be on the boat of my game sense is better than my mechanics. Balance them out, don't go 50-50 for everything. And as always, like me as well, <laughs> please take me as an example, I'm not a good player by any means. I'm just here trying to give you tips through an analysis point of view. And I've spent a lot of hours trying to analyze why I'm not that good at the game and why a lot of people around my level aren't that good at the game. Now, if you understand this, and if you're serious about your progression, you're gonna try and mend this, I hope. Remember, do those training packs you need. Don't needlessly play packs that other people recommend them. The only reason I recommend that one training pack is because, in my opinion, <laughs> it covers every aspect of your game. And defense packs as well, backward packs, do them. 